let's start with them. Um, how are you finding Arden so far? <laughs> oh man, I find it um, to be a wonderful place. I am loving my time so far. Let's see, last night we hit um, the Bank restaurant over there by Trinity College. And then today we did Trinity College in the Book of Kells. And I just told them we found this awesome um, pub and I had the traditional Irish stew and a nice smoky black coffee. And so, so far, thumbs up. And the best cabbies ever, <laughs> anywhere, of anywhere. I can't disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> The Irish chat a lot. <laughs> it's kind of sharp, that's the tough bit. <laughs> so, let's start with, um, maybe we get into the serious, co serious questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, how did you get into voice acting? Um, I was rather fortunate. I sort of accidentally got into it. Um, I wish it was more intentional, but I was already an actor and I had moved to Houston to live with my aunt and get a day job, an easy day job, while I made enough money to go to New York, which was, I was a huge theater snob and I really wanted to be on Broadway and be a very serious actor. And I ended up getting an agent in Houston and started getting voice work really quickly, doing um, just voices for commercials and there's a lot of industrial work in Houston. And I got a phone call from my agent to audition for anime at ADV Films, it was then, and I did not know what anime was. Uh, my only experience had been exposure to what some of the boys in college watched, which was hentai. <laughs> and so when I got this call from my agent, I was like, I, I don't know what kind of girl is <laughs> happening. And they were like, no, 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 this is just come. Anyway, I got into it then. I booked a little small part and there was a new director at ADV named Don Rush and he was about to direct a show called Full Metal Panic and he asked me to audition and I got the lead in that show and it turned out to be kind of a big show and I just hit at just the right moment and began getting a ton of work and that was oh my gosh 13 years ago um, so I, I literally and it wasn't until I was cast in Full Metal Panic Don said um, this this is kind of a big show. You might want to go online and learn a little bit about it. And I was like, okay. Huh. So I went online and was entirely shocked to realize that there was this huge fan community and people who would review your work and critique you. And I had no idea. And of course, at the time, I was like, they're going to hate me. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. What if I'm terrible at this? This entire community of people in the world is going to know because they all would. Anyway, so that was my sort of inglorious stumble into doing anime voiceover. And it just turned out to be a really good fit for me, you know. Right, well, you mentioned um, Full Metal Panic, but uh, what's been your favorite role you've played so far? Well, I have, I have lots of favorites. Um, because it, for the longest time, my favorite was easily Princess Tutu. Because it was the first show, we all have that first show. And that was the first show that I was actually a part of, I got to be a part of it, where it just caught me, everything about it caught me. And I was really invested in it and invested in the story. And, um, but since then, I've, I've added different shows. Um, just because my repertoire and my exposure has gotten bigger. Soul Leader, I think, is incredible. Um, plus, that was one of the most um, evil, truly evil characters I have ever played in Medusa, the Snake Witch. Um, but you're awesome, by the way. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Medusa must be fun to play. It's <laughs> so fun. Well, and then, and then they're, you know, in a different category of favorite. Um, I've been allowed to be Nami in One Piece for 10 years now, which is such an incredible opportunity. It just doesn't happen for many of us that you get to stick with a show that long. Um, you know, there's like a handful of shows that have hundreds of episodes. And so I think those of us that get to be a part of those shows um, have a sense of how truly fortunate we are to get to follow these people through so many different character arcs. You know, that's just, it's rare, it's just rare. Okay. 
any upcoming roles you can tell us about as well? Or are you not allowed to say? Well, now the companies don't want us to talk about anything. We're not allowed to ever say anything. Um, but there, there were some recent things that are already out that are not secrets, which is it was a huge honor to play Ochako in My Hero Academia. That was a huge honor. Um, what else? John Swayze and I are here um, to talk a little bit on Sunday, I think, maybe tomorrow, about uh, The Boy and the Beast. That was a huge honor. Um, that was still fairly, fairly recent. Um, Parasite the Maxim out of, off, through Seraphim was on Toonami recently. That was a super fun honor. Um, yeah, I don't know if I get to talk about anything else. <laughs> I'm going to give you from the voice acting because you, you mentioned something earlier about being a bit of a theatre snob. So I'm going to have to ask you, favourite theatre pieces, uh, plays or musicals, your choice? Well, I join the rest of the free world in having a total fixation on Hamilton right now. Oh yeah. Yes. I, I, mean, I, I know. <laughs> I know. When I was picked up from the airport, Risa Risa had it playing in her car. So we sang it together, coming to the hotel. Well, what's your favorite track of Hamilton then? Oh my gosh. Satisfied, the song Satisfied. Oh yes. <laughs> Sorry, I got too excited. It's incredible. I know, it's incredible. My daughter, my six-year-old daughter the other day, asked if I would play Satisfied off of that album. Except she didn't say that. She was like, you know the one where she says, where's your family from? And I was like, <laughs> That's not fun. <laughs> We've got little theater people in the making, as it should be. <laughs> I think for me, it's Lion Wait, it's one of my favorites as well. Which one? Lion Wait. Oh. Track 13. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> See, That's I've, incredible. I've got her hooked on it now as well, and my girlfriend's also hooked on it. Because a lot of people obviously haven't seen it yet. Yeah. But it's just, it's a case of just, just listen to this one song, and then this song. And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Yeah. <laughs> and two hours later, I've heard the whole thing. It's incredible. We bought it for my mother-in-law um, for her birthday, for Mother's Day. Because she also, and she, I was like, Michael, I don't know. I don't know if she'll hang with the language. I don't know. But she loves theater. And sure enough, like later on that day, she was like, I'm halfway through. I had to stop it because I had to make dinner. You know? <laughs> but... <laughs> It's just wonderful. And I mean, that's the thing, right, about theater that's just so fantastic is, um, and especially that piece, to, to attract so many people into the same conversation, you know, and to, to set on fire this uh, enjoyment of history and how life intersects with art and just all of that. It's so exciting. It's not just that. It's, um, I think as well, it, you learn so much about one man through two hours more than you would probably from pick up a textbook, mm -hmm. which is great. And a lot, even some of the themes that are still very relevant today. So it's a very good piece. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a big fan. So it's good to be another fan. Yes. yes. <laughs> so what um, what do we think attracted you to theatre? What what uh, early on in your career with drew you into wanting to be an actor? Well, um, I am from small towns all over Texas. My dad was a football coach, and we would we moved a lot growing up. And he was a football coach, and he had cows and stuff. And I was never good at it. I wasn't good at sports. Um, I was a team player, which means I was good at sitting on the bench and clapping for other people. But when I get in, I, I would have all this want, desire to do well, but would not materialize in any kind of skill. Um, and I was just an average student. Um, but I was really good at acting. Um, in my small town, we, we were too small to have sort of an acting class or any kind of drama club, but we did, we competed every year in these competitions. And it was the first thing I ever just excelled at naturally. I didn't really work, it's not that I didn't work hard at it, it's just it was a fit. It just came naturally, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, getting over a cold. <laughs> um, and my senior year, I was offered some scholarships. Um, to do, to do that. So I ended up looking, looking around, and went and auditioned at a college in Texas called Angelo State University, and was offered a full ride 
if I would change my major from journalism to theater. And that day is when my dad became a supporter of the arts. <laughs> Up until then, you know, it's kind of like, what are you going to do? You can't be a, an actor. Who gets a theater degree? What do you do with that? But if they pay your way to school, your family really gets on board. <laughs> and then it just turned out that um, I was just suited to it. I'm, I'm just suited to it. And I've been lucky that I, I got that degree. I went on to get a master's degree. And I've managed to make a life. Um, I mean, it's, it's my only gig. I don't have a day job anymore. So I'm very fortunate that it's worked out for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish. Now, the only sad thing is, is I haven't done theater in a while. Um, and that's mostly to do with timing. I was doing so much voice work that it requires a certain amount of travel. In Texas, there are two places where you do it. It's in Dallas and in Houston. And so in order to travel, you just have to have the flexibility, and theater doesn't give you that. So my only sadness right now is that I'm not doing theater, but I hope to return to it. Yeah, so not theater yet. Also. Yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, but it's where my start was. It's sort of where I think all of our home is, if you start in it. I mean, everybody, almost everybody I know in the voice acting community started out in theater. Yeah. We've seen that from a few people that have started with Shakespeare and other things, and they've just fallen into voice work, and it's just, they've enjoyed it so much they're stuck with it. Yeah. Because you can, especially nowadays, I find that the, the voice acting has really improved since... Let's look at like early anime from the 1980s and the 1990s, early 1990s when it was, yeah. won't say anything. <laughs> I'm not going to say how bad it was. <laughs> it wasn't all bad, was it good? But now you have talented people yourselves who actually bring something to the roles that you care about. Them. You know, and I wonder if because there's just the proliferation of stuff, there's more to compare it to, that the audience is more just more discerning. Where, you know, I mean, and there, you can com there's just so much to compare now, where you can go, oh yeah, that's bad, and that's better, that's better than that. You know, but I think there's a point at which, like back then, um, when you hear some of the older fans talk, and they say, we were just so thankful to be watching it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that we didn't care. You know, at the time, we were just so thankful to have our, our cassette, <laughs> our tapes, <laughs> that we took it as it was, and you know, but yeah, I agree with you. I think it has, as the market has changed, that voice acting has had to get better. Well, I can still remember the days of my friends having cassettes and putting them on and you just couldn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, mouth moving, words coming out separate, and you're like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, and it, it must be very hard for yourselves, especially the, to do the voice acting, to get syncing up with lips, which don't, I know modern technology can help. It is, it is, it is, and you know, it depends too. I mean, the actors, let me put it this way. I've been a part of projects where matching the lips has, there's been a great deal of effort put into that. I've been a part of projects that are on a timeline where it's kind of like, eh, it's close enough. So at the end of the day, sometimes I don't know that, you know, I could look at something and go, it's not perfect, but I didn't, I, I would have done better if I'd had time or if I was alleged. So much is outside of the control of us. You know, it's like I had one person approach me at a convention. I was so mad about an accent I did in the show. And I was like, I feel you. I think you have a total point. I did not make that choice. <laughs> you know, I was told to do that by the people who hired me to do it, so you are welcome to take <laughs> your case with them. It's out of my hands. There's another thing I have to ask you as well. I was looking, obviously, before this on your IMDb page. Yeah. You were listed as writer on several of the animes. Is mm -hmm. this because you would help pick out your, your lines almost for it to match it up? Is that the reason? or No. Um, hi. Oh, she's saying that it's almost time. <laughs> um, just for whoever's watching this. Um, <laughs> Yes, I was, I spent, a, a, there was a moment in Funimation's history where I was a subwriter for one of their writers, and it turned out, it was when my husband and I, we were really trying to pay off all of our debt, and so 
I was a subwriter for a while. I wrote most of D. Gray Man the first season, or a lot of it. I wrote a lot of D. Gray Man. And I wrote almost all of a show called Bamboo Blade. Um, no, I think there was something else. And I had roles in both of those. But um, I was in Ella, like I was the full-on writer. I was a full-on real writer. And it was way fun. Way fun. I enjoyed it a lot. And it just turned out that the writing system there was um, altered. And I didn't, I didn't make it into that new thing, which was fine. It was not intended to be a full-on thing for me. I had just kind of been doing it to try to finish off painting our, my student loan. Finally. Well, uh, one final question then. This is one I like to ask people who write or who perform multiple roles in voice acting in particular. If you had to go on a road trip with one of the characters you have voiced, which character would you pick and why? Oh, if I had to go on a road trip. Well, there's the easy answer is Nami because she is a navigator. I could turn myself off and leave it all, <laughs> and she would get us there and probably swindle everybody along the way. <laughs> so that is the easy answer. <laughs> but a fun answer, oh my gosh, did you ever, have you ever heard of a show called Super Gals? No, I've seen that one. Okay, you guys, listen, do yourself a fun favor, okay? <laughs> now you, you have to suspend your like desire for everything to match <laughs> and all of that. But it's this super fun show called Super Gals and I played the lead protagonist, her name was Ron Kotobuki, and it's all about turf wars, girls shopping, Shibuya, fake tan girls, and it's hilarious, and I would love to go on a road trip with those people. It was so funny and fun. Like, that sounds ridiculous, I can't believe I just thought of that show. But it was another one that back when I did it, I was like, this is hilarious. Oh, how fun that the same people who make this can also make everybody, you know, there's serious anime, there's just this wealth of stuff to choose from. Oh, yeah. and there's something for everybody. That's true. Even for you, depending on what your mood is, you can find something that will speak to it. That's some very weird things to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like your college friends would have watched. <laughs> and it's true. It's true. Whatever shakes your bake, whatever floats your boat, it's there for the taking. It's true. <laughs> no problem. Right? Well, thank you again. Oh, thank you so much. No well, thanks. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>